Mayor Santa Maria, and I've had the amazing opportunity this weekend to spend some time at the World Science Festival here in New York City. Right now, I'm at Innovation Square, and I'm about to learn about robots, the world's lightest material, and something called quantum levitation. Let's go check it out. So I'm here with Dr. Heinrich Fronsek from Festo, and we're talking about this amazing robotic jellyfish that they have here. What, what's going on with this? <laughs> yeah, this is uh, learning from nature, because uh, jellyfish, uh, the natural jellyfish, with this peristaltic movement, with this uh, propulsion, is so fascinating that our engineers decided to rebuild it as a robot. And what you see is uh, using fin tails from the fish for this propulsion, and it works like a real jellyfish. And they, they call this biomimicry, yes. right? Kind of trying to mimic biology. Yes and make technology from it. Yes. Have you made any other robotic animals? Yeah, sure. For example, Smartbird. This is a flight model. Um, this inspiration from nature is inspiration from the herring gull. So the seagull um, was a natural model for this um, uh, flight model. And um, this bird is able to fly autonomously start, land and fly with a cell phone battery and you can keep it for 20 minutes in the air. Yeah. It's uh, Here we are talking about energy efficiency, lightweight design, carbon fiber structures. You can move the head and the tail, that's uh, for maneuvering and uh, you see that? It's like <laughs> a real bird. So how does it land? It doesn't crash land? It doesn't have any legs? No. <laughs> Normally we we, we, we take it. Oh, you catch it? Yeah, we catch it. Oh, it just yeah. lands right in your yeah. hand. Yeah. Imagine across the oh, wow. I'm here with Dr. Alan Jacobson from HRL Laboratories, and he is showing me the world's lightest material. So keep in mind, this is all metal, right? There's nothing else in here. Wow. At, at HRO, we've developed a new technique to um, architect the material. The idea is that we're taking the architecture of, of the trusses, um, which are used for, for bridges and buildings, you know, I those kind of triangulated structures, and shrinking it down to the materials level. And we, we made this by, by coating nickel on a, a polymer micro lattice scaffold and then chemically etching out or removing that polymer. And you're left with this, these, these hollow nickel tubes that construct this material. So we can make, you know, very large unit cell structures mm -hmm. like this, um, you know, medium sized unit cell structures. Or very you know, small unit cell structures. Where you almost can't even see it Where unless you, you look can't even see under it. a microscope. Maybe. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So why why make the world's lightest material? We're trying to push the bounds of existing material properties. I'm here with Dr. Boaz Almog from Tel Aviv University. And he has been demonstrating today quantum levitation. What exactly is that? It's a phenomenon when you take a material that when you cool it down, it becomes a superconductor. And what's a superconductor? It's a quantum state of the matter. And the superconductor has two main properties. First of all, it's, uh, it's a perfect conductor. It, it conducts DC electricity without any friction. Okay. That's one thing. And the other thing is that it tries to repel magnetic fields from inside the material. Okay. Um, and the quantum levitation is, is a result of the, the other property, the, the relationship between the superconductor and magnetism. So what we actually do is we force magnetic fields into the superconductor, and the superconductor just tries to keep them fixed and tries to make sure they, they're not moving around the magnetic field lines. Okay. And it does that by just keeping itself levitating in midair. We developed this uh, in uh, Guy Deutscher's group in Tel Aviv University for 15 years now. And uh, a few people worked on this project, Michelle Azulay, Guy Deutscher, and myself. What we did is we did something that uh, it actually surprised us. We grew very high quality, thin films. And we asked ourselves, will it levitate? Uh, of course, I, I, asked, I said no. <laughs> That's been the first time. But, but my, my professor, when I was doing my PhD, said, yeah, let's try it. It will levitate. 
and it really did. So uh, your professor knew something you yeah, didn't know. <laughs> yeah, he knew better. <laughs> so the the fact that the, the thin film is so high quality, it, it's almost single crystal, makes it uh, possible to levitate itself and much more. So this is the first time that we can actually demonstrate uh, quantum levitation using thin films and it, it becomes available for the public to see.